So now we will look at the equipment that's required to start uh, performing an echo exam. There are a few different things that we need to consider, and the first and most important of all of these is, pa is the patient and patient comfort. Part of this actually includes the, the selection of the location where you'll be performing your ultrasound exam. So one of the best things you can do to really help get started um, performing these, these echo exams uh, to get really good quality images and the most diagnostic information is to choose somewhere that's a little bit out of the way, that's not in the main thoroughfare and is hopefully a bit, a bit quieter, which can be difficult to find in the general practice setting. But if it's somewhere that the door won't be opened and closed continually, that's hopefully not right next to the, the main uh, waiting and reception area, that can be very helpful. Also, it's important that the, the room needs to be able to be dimmed, so the lights, uh, if there's any windows in the room, um, that they can be covered over. All of these things will just help you to, to get more out of your examination. The other things we need to consider are the actual bits of equipment. So we need to look at what type of table we will have. So, obviously, this is a, a dedicated cardiac ultrasound examination table, but not everyone will have this. The most important thing is you want to have access for your probe to get to the, to the heart where you're wanting to actually perform the exam. So, if you don't have a table like this, there are many manufacturers where you can purchase them. But some, some people have actually used uh, a bit of wood that you actually can cut uh, a bit of a hole out of so that you can gain access to the, to the dog. This table is padded, so we haven't placed a vet bed or a towel or anything like that. But I would, if you were using something like a, a, a homemade table, just to ensure that you put something on there so that the patient is comfortable. The other thing to consider is the use of sedation. So any seda most sedations that are available, most pharmaceutical agents that we have at our, our disposal are going to affect the, the cardiac function in some way. And so if we're wanting to get a true idea and a true evaluation of the heart, it's best if we can perform this with a, in an unsedated animal. However, there are several recommendations for uh, sedation protocols that you can use in various textbooks. Our patient today is, is not sedated, and so we will be, be really looking at his true cardiac function. Another thing that we'll need to consider is the machine that we have available. So there's a wide range of ultrasound machines that people have in, in general practices. So some will be cart-based, and the, the large ones that wheel around the room, there are some that are quite portable. The most important thing is that you feel comfortable with using your machine. Obviously, there are dedicated machines that have specialist probes, specialist cardiac measurement packages, specialist uh, things that will help you to really do more advanced cardiology, but that's out with the, the scope of these videos. So the main thing that you need to have is an ultrasound machine and a probe that will be able to, to gain an image. So today we'll be focusing on black and white images, so B-mode images, but color and color Doppler and other forms of Doppler are very useful for being able to evaluate the integrity of valves and, and other structures within the heart. However, there's a large amount of information you can glean from performing a black and white echo study. So most, most practices that do have ultrasound will have a machine that, that does perform the, these functions and is up to the capabilities. So the machine that I'll be using today does have a, a specialist cardiac probe. It's called a, a phase array probe, and basically what this is, is it's a, a smaller footprint probe. What this means is the actual footprint or the scanning surface is smaller than you would see on some other probes. This allows you to gain very good access in the intercostal region, and so you can fit between the ribs of, of most animals, whether it be a, a a cat to a Great Dane. However, if you don't have this type of probe, other probes that you have will be able to hopefully do the job. It may just be a little bit of a difficulty getting into the, into the right intercostal space. But adding a little bit of extra gel and being a bit patient will hopefully enable you to, to get the views that you need. But as I said, today we'll be using a, a specialist probe. Another thing that some machines have the capability of is ECG function. 
This is where the ECG leads are actually connected directly into the machine output or the, the, the feed of the machine. And so this will enable us to have a simultaneous ultrasound image with also knowing what the electrocardiogram is doing at the same time. This will enable us, if we are performing measurements and calculations, to select the right point during the cardiac cycle to actually start performing these. We won't be using these today. As, as I said, we're wanting to really get started in the general practice setting, and not everyone has these available. But just to let you know that on some machines it is a capability. But we'll, we'll show you some ways to get around this in your, in your normal practice setting. It's very important also to remember that, as with any other form of ultrasound, that clipping and patient preparation in terms of the application of gel will really help you to have the, the best possible image when you're getting started. Good boy. So today we will be going just from the right side and we'll explain that in a moment. But what we'll actually do is clip, and, and our patient has already been prepared, but we will clip over the apex beat feel for the apex, apex beat, and clip a small square about two to four centimeters over the apex beat, and that will give you a good window into the heart. Also, apply, applying ultrasound gel about five minutes before you're ready to get started will really help it to soak in and ensure that you're going to get the best possible images as you first get started. You notice that our, our patient is in right lateral recumbency. That is because we'll be looking primarily at right-sided views, and that's what we'll be focusing on today. There are other views, which are the subcostal views, coming down from, from a more abdominal approach, and also from the left side. However, the right-sided views will give us, as we said, a lot of information. The left-sided views are very useful for, for performing Doppler studies, but we won't, we won't be covering that today. Another thing that, that is very useful for having the patient in right lateral recumbency is that the, the dependent lung will not be as aerated as the non-dependent lung. So this will give us a good window as the heart is able to actually fall with gravity down into the cardiac notch and actually be more in contact with the thoracic wall. So that way we'll have a really good window into seeing the, the myocardium and the, the blood pool and also the valves, as I said. So our patient is prepared. The other thing that we haven't mentioned is our, our assistants. It's really important, and actually the assistants play one of the most, most major roles while we're, while we're going to get ready to perform an echo. So having the patient appropriately positioned will really help you so you're not struggling as much to, to gain access to the heart. So we're in right lateral recumbency. We have our, our two assistants here. And what we will be doing is actually having the patient where we want the apex of the heart, the apex beat, to be right overlying the notch that we have in the, in the table so we can gain access. So what we'll need to do is make sure that we have the best possible window. So that includes pulling the dependent leg cranially and ensuring that it stays there throughout the exam. So sometimes giving a gentle reminder is, is a little useful. But our patient is ready, very relaxed, and it's just being very calm, very quiet, and doing it in a methodical way. So we're ready to get started. 